Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about nutrients and the different types of nutrients that are in food and what they do for you. I want to throw a disclaimer out there right away. I am not a dietary expert. I am not a nutritional expert. I'm going to teach you basically what these different nutrients are and what they do, um, but I will not recommend how much of each type of nutrient you should have. That's up for a medical professional or, or someone who's a dietary expert to recommend. I will tell you that most people will say, and that in general, most people say that if you eat a balanced diet that has the right amounts or or moderate amounts of all the things we're going to talk about today, and you make sure that the calories that you eat or bring into your body, um, you also burn about the same number of calories, that that's a good way to go. I will also warn you that there are a lot of people out there who try to make money off of people by selling them all kinds of diets. Some of those diets are good for, are pretty good for you. Some of those diets are very dangerous for you. So you have to be super careful as you get older when you're talking about diets or when you're looking into different types of diets that people are selling. And a lot of people will try to sell you different kits and things. And again, some of them are okay and they're actually healthy for you, but some of them are very dangerous. So you need to be super careful. Again, I think the key is moderation. Eat everything in moderation. Try to eat the right amounts or good amounts of each type one of these types of nutrients and make sure that the calories you're bringing in and the calories you're burning every day are lined up and you should be okay. Again, though, I'm not a dietary professional, so I want to make sure I, I, I state that up front. Um, but be careful, guys, as you get older, uh, if you're trying to lose some weight or if you're trying to gain some weight because you're trying to bulk up for sports or whatever, be very, very careful because a lot of people will, will take advantage of people who are trying to either lose or gain weight and sell them all kinds of products and kits. And some of them are just not healthy. They're not good for you at all. So be super careful as you go forward, guys. And um, my recommendation would be as you go forward and you get older, if you're wondering about a diet or wondering about um, something that you're thinking about purchasing, that you contact a, a doctor or a health professional first and clear it with them. Just make sure that, that it really sounds okay to them. Okay, so what are nutrients? A nutrient is a chemical that is needed by the body to keep your body in good health. Um, your body needs nutrients in order to complete all of its functions. Human beings actually need a large number of different types of nutrients in order to stay healthy. And some examples of those nutrients are carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. What are carbohydrates? Well, carbohydrates are made from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And you can actually see that in the name carbohydrates. Carbo at the front stands for the carbon. Hydr, or H-Y-D-R, stands for the hydrogen. And whenever you see an H on the end of some sort of chemical name, that means oxygen. So carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, carbohydrates. Okay. Um, it's also the most commonly called glucose. Those glucose molecules will link together into longer chain molecules and actually form starches. So you've got glucose and then longer chains make starches. Carbohydrates actually are provide the body with a whole lot of energy very quickly. So they burn very quickly in the body and provide a whole lot of energy. And they're used as fuel to help keep the body alive and keep the fu your functions going. There are two main types of carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. I will tell you that most people consider simple carbohydrates to not be very good for you. Those are called glucose and starch. They're things like sugars and white flour, um, things like cookies um, and things like that. And they're considered to not be very good for you. Um, they burn very quickly, which means you get a quick rush of energy when you eat them. But then after that, you feel super tired. Um, a lot of people call it a sugar high. Basically, you eat something really sugary and you get a big rush of energy. But then in a half an hour, an hour, an hour and a half later, you feel you're really tired and lousy. Um, so simple carbohydrates in general are not considered to be very good for you. Complex carbohydrates, on the other hand, are very good for you, um, and they're also called fiber. So if you hear the word fiber out there, that's what they're called. Um, they are also called cellulose, and they're found in the walls of plant cells. Okay, So they're found mostly in whole wheat, um, whole wheat bread, whole wheat tortillas, whole wheat flour, um, fruits, and ve some vegetables. And they're so good for you because they help your digestive system. Number one, they make your food bulkier so you feel more full. 
So you'll, if you're feeling really hungry, it's good to eat complex carbohydrates, fiber, because it helps you to feel full. They also help the muscles in your intestines to actually move um, the waste products out of your body. Um, and they actually help um, you if you're constipated. Car uh, fiber will basically help you um, to have a bowel movement if you're more constipated. That's why you'll hear people tell you if you're constipated, eat prunes or take some Metamucil because both prunes and Metamucil are full of fiber. What are fats? Fats are made from carbon, hydrogen atoms linked together along with some oxygen atoms. There's two main kinds of fats. I take it back, guys. There's all kinds of fats. They have all kinds of different names. But there's two main big categories. The two big categories are solid fats. Those are fats produced by animals or animal products. And again, they're not considered to be super good for you. Things like lard, butter, um, whole milk. Um, basically, they are more solid fats, and they actually are not considered to be so hot for you or so good for you. Then there's liquid fats. Liquid fats are produced by plants. And they are considered to be better for you, again, in moderation if you're eating the right amount of them. Um, and examples of those are olive oil, sunflower seed oil, coconut oil, peanut oil, um, any kind of oil that basically comes from a plant. Again, if you're cooking, they tell you to use liquid fats instead of solid fats because they are better for you. But again, everything in moderation, if you're using a ton of liquid fats, you it will add calories and fat to you and you'll end up... Um, gaining more weight than you wish. So again, everything in moderation. Um, what do fats do for you? Well, believe it or not, fats are necessary for you. Um, they um, help your cell membranes to form, so inside your cells. Um, they actually contain more energy than carbohydrates, um, and but they don't burn as quickly. Um, and then fats are used by your body to actually store energy. They're also used by animals' bodies to store energy. That um, Bears and different animals that hibernate will actually store up fat for the winter and then burn that fat for energy while they're hibernating. In mammals, fats act like a heat insulator. Basically, it's a layer underneath the skin that ends up helping to keep you warm. Um, and again, too much fat storage is not good for a person. It can cause heart disease and trouble with your organs. And so too much fat is not a good thing. Um, but again, you do need some fats in order for your body to carry out its functions. And I will tell you guys also, if you eat a whole lot of sugar and you don't burn all the calories from that sugar, you don't use all that energy, a lot some that sugar can be converted into fat in your body and be stored in your body as fat as well. What are proteins? Proteins are made from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen atoms. Some of them have sulfur atoms in them. Um, these atoms combine together and make molecules called amino acids. And then those amino acids link together to make protein molecules. What do proteins do for you? Well, they are actually the building blocks for your cells, so they help your cells to build new cells and grow. Um, they're needed to grow new tissue and organs. They're needed for your body to grow. They're needed for repairing um, damaged tissue and skin. Um, they actually make enzymes which are used in digesting your food to help break down your food. And it's also used to help um, your cells actually speed up their reactions. Um, proteins are considered to be good for people who are trying to build muscle. Um, the, if you're trying to build muscle, if you're working out bodybuilding or you play a lot of sports, they will tell you to eat more proteins. Um, but again, be careful. Too much protein can be bad for you, so you don't want to go overboard. Um, but they will tell you if you're bodybuilding or if you're um, doing football or those types of sports um, to add some more protein to your diet. Again, exactly how much you need to contact a medical professional to know for certain. But And again, too much protein can hurt you. But proteins build tissue and muscle tissue. And so they do tell bodybuilders and, and, and sports people to eat some more of them in order to help build muscle. Vitamins. Vitamins are actually needed in small amounts. Um, when they first were discovered, they were named after the letters of the alphabet, so vitamin A, B, K, C. Um, later, as um, we learned what types of atoms were inside of them, they were given chemical names. Um, the following are just some examples of vitamins. There are many, many more. You'll read about them in your book. Um, but vitamin A actually helps with eyesight, and it helps to create mucus linings in your digestive system and respiratory system to help fight against infection. Um, vitamin A is found in milk and liver and different types of oils. Vitamin B1 actually prevents digestive disorders. It's found in things like bread, milk, brown rice, soybeans, and potatoes. It also um, helps prevent a disease called beriberi, which you will read about in the book. 
Um, vitamin C prevents the disease called scurvy. Um, scurvy is a disease where your gums bleed and your circulatory system can be damaged. Vitamin C is also very good for your immune system. So they'll tell you if you get sick a lot, you should eat um, some more foods that have vitamin C in them. Um, they're found in oranges, lemons, papaya, and guava, and, and lots of citrus fruits. And finally, vitamin D prevents a disease called rickets um, in the bones. Um, rickets often affect small children or young children who don't get enough vitamin D in their diet. And what will happen is their bones will become very soft, and then their leg bones will bend, and so their legs will be very bendy, and they can be crippled to the point where they can't walk because of it. Um, vitamin D is found in things like egg yolk, butter, oil, herring, and believe it or not, you can actually get vitamins from sunlight. Again, don't go overboard. You don't want to get out and go out and get sunburned, um, but you can actually get um, absorb vitamins from the sunlight. And vitamin D is a vitamin you absorb from the sunlight. Minerals. What are minerals? Well, minerals are needed by your body. There's 20 different minerals you need to stay healthy. Some of the minerals you need in large amounts. An example of that would be calcium. Calcium is used to build strong bones, strong teeth. It's used to help your blood clot. It's used to help your muscles work. So calcium is a big one um, that people need. And they will tell children, actually, to take in more calcium because their bones are growing when they're little. Um, and then there's other minerals that you only need in very small amounts. And when you, we say you only need a mineral in small amounts, we call that trace amounts. An example of that would be like zinc. Okay. Um, another mineral example is iron. Iron actually helps you make red blood cells, um, which helps you transport oxygen through your body. Um, the iron actually makes the red pigment in red blood cells called hemoglobin. So on top of all these different nutrients, what else do we need? Well, your body needs a whole lot of water because your body is actually made out of 70% of water or more. Um, and a person can actually survive for weeks without food, but without water, you can only make it a couple days before you're toast. Uh, every chemical reaction that happens in your body, every nutrient that's absorbed in your body gets dissolved in water. Um, water is used to transport the components in the blood, and it's also used to cool down your body through sweat. Basically, when you sweat, the water evaporates off of your body, and it ends up cooling your body. Most dietary people will tell you that you should drink 8 to 10 glasses of water a day. Not talking 32 or 54 ounce big gulp glasses. I'm talking 8 ounce glasses of water a day. So about 10, 8 to 10 8 ounce glasses of water a day. They will tell you during the summer to drink a little more. They will tell you if you play sports to drink more. They will tell you if you do a lot of physical activity to drink more than that. But on average, most people, it's 8 to 10 glasses of 8 ounce water a day. Again, everything in moderation, though, because believe it or not, you can die from drinking too much water. Now, guys, you would have to drink gallons and gallons and gallons and gallons and gallons of water all at once. Um, but it can be damaging to you if you have too much of it. So, again, like everything else in your diet, moderation is the key. Ladies and gentlemen, um, please make sure that you have your notes ready for class, and I look forward to seeing you.